instructional part of the video, you can get tabs and backing tracks if you go to my website, www.erichaugenguitar.com. For information about the sound tools I'm using today, go ahead and click on the description box below in your YouTube player. One more thing, thank you so much to everybody who supports me in all the various ways that you do. There is now one more way which you can support me. I am on Patreon slash Eric Haugen Guitar. And now to the lesson. So imagine you were playing some kind of halftime Neil Young kind of That's just G, and oh, my favorite C, the C over G. Yeah, so you start with the regular C, bring the ring finger around, and then the pinky gets the uh, C note. Now, your first cross-picking run is really just Do, Re, Mi, so that's three, O, two. G, A, B, and then you're using your D and your G strings as your drone. And the interesting thing about this is because we're in 4-4 four, four time, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, you're getting a push and pull because you're moving in groups of 3, 1, 2, 3, which is actually a very common syncopation throughout, oh, all genres of music. I think of it as the Bo Diddley beat. There it is again. It's in bossa nova. It's throughout all genres. It creates a great way to like, if it's going forward, to make it go side to side a little bit. And if that was on a G chord, well, we're going to move up to a C and do a similar idea. So, you know, there's our C, and so we got, you know, we got Do, Re, Mi, C, E, C, D, E, you know, 3, O, 2, and now we're using the 0 and the 1 of our G and our B as our drones. Pretty cool. Let's see, that's a one chord, then that's a four chord. D is the five chord of the key, so it's good to practice. Same idea, Do, Re, Mi on a D chord with the A and the D there as our drones of the D. Here's the interesting thing, because of the mechanics of our hand and uh, the guitar, you know, you could go, sure, but that, in, you know, at the speed that I was shredding this, ha, 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 um, I wasn't going to be able to do that in time. So I just let that G be open, which is kind of neat, gives us a little bit of, um, it changes the line. So we got. And then I was like, well, let's see. Let's get back to a G and put some kind of finisher lick on it, which usually in bluegrass or old timey, you know, there's like the. Or some such thing like that. But I was like, well, let's kind of keep that groove going. That's kind of my variant because that still has that one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, that, that, that rhythmic thing going on. So yeah, I'm kind of changing up where I'm droning. So five, oh, those are all G's. Jump to that G. Oh, that's a many G's. Open E. Yep, you see me grab that D there, that third fret of the B. And then open. And then I do a little, that's a common, a little kind of pentatonic gospel 
kind of thing. 3-2-0 oh on the G string. 2-0 oh there. And then, never content to leave things alone, I'm like, what if I did a 1-4-5 in minor also to really try and test out where I could put cross picking. In, in general, my, the principle of this lesson is that you know, A, open chords are better than we think they are. <laughs> There's a lot of magic hiding in them. This hiding in those chords that we forget with our desire to shred up high in the closed position. I love the way things cross over. So to work on your open position, you just got to pick your, your, your 10 or 11 standard open chords, E, E minor, G, A, A minor, you know, it, the, the ones we've all learned, and kind of see what you can do with them, where your pentatonic scales, where your cross-picking licks, <laughs> cross-picking licks live. Um, and so, yeah, that's, that's the, the side, side quest of this. So I'm coming in on my E minor now chromatic walk up to the, that E of that D string, you know, second fret, and now I'm thinking like, well, how can I kind of keep that thing going now? Yes, I can. So, yeah, I'm going... So, 2, 4, oh, 2, and notice, yeah, and then I'm using, I'm not going... I could have, but for whatever reason, I kind of like the the Dave Rawlings yeah, interplay of F sharp and open G. So I'm going. That's what I'm doing there. Side note: If you notice, my picking for this is down, down, up, down, down, up, down, up. I call that economy picking. Rather than, some people will tell you to do straight alternate. Hey, if that works for you, that's great. The only thing I would say not to do is go down, down, down. You'll just wear yourself out. So you need that upstroke because it flips the pick back around. It goes doo 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 You could get like an oval going. Let's see if E minor is the one of, you know, E minor is the relative minor of G. So that's why I went to E minor. A minor is my four. Oh, I bet I could do a similar. That's exactly what I do. So here's my A minor. There's my melody, two, four, oh, two, A, B, G, A. And I have my index finger on the first fret there to get that C. And then, yep, there's my open E. And I think, yeah. Remember. So I'm going. Yeah, I had to do like a special little thing there at the end. Pull off from that C to that B to buy my hand the time that I need to get to the B chord or B7 the five chord in E minor. Yeah, that's neat. There's the melody part. Four, five. There's that D sharp. And again, I, I buy myself a split second by going. an open E so I can get to the next position to do my my kind of like up high cascade back down run. So the, the minor portion again. And now I want to like, and this is something, this is straight out Dave Rawlings. One thing I observe him do that's so good of the many things is he's really you know he's great in his open position and I, when i watch him play live he has all these licks where he gets him, he works himself up into this middle position of the guitar and he has these magical like cascades that'll get him back down that was where like i'm like you know i've seen him play a good handful of times now and I'm, yeah, every time i'm like what is this magician doing so this is my take on that What 
what we're doing is we're using the open strings this is to, to keep the melody going. So this is kind of an E pentatonic run, really. Seven, five, eight, O. Oh. And then, second part is flat five, so that's, well, that's the interval. Eight, seven, and then you're gonna get that open G. Yeah, so it really ends up just being a, what is that? It's really just that, but in the context of the weird cross pick, or the, the harp-like way to do it, you, you bend your brain to get... Seven, zero, one, oh, three, oh, three. Again, it's a clever way to, to get get the neat kind of harp-like thing coming down. And then you're back. A fun challenge. Okay, so my assignment with this would be obviously, well, yeah, you can practice the thing that I gave you, but more, or, you know, that I put together. But I think you'd do a lot better to just sit there, pick up your guitar, and be like, all right, D chord, what can I do with this? What, what can I do with this D chord? What can I drone? What notes can I comfortably move with my fingers? Okay, A minor chord, what can I do to you? Because for any of you who play anything at all folksy, you know, these, just throwing in a couple of beats of these or a little shadow of this idea makes everything come together uh, beautifully. And so that, that's what I aim for. I kind of put this very difficult thing together, but really it's much more about, hey, look what I did to that C chord there. That's kind of neat. That's all you need, just one little thing. And really with open chords, I think, I counted once, I feel like there's like 11 standard open chords. And if you have little cross-picky things that you can do to each of them, you'd be surprised at how, how close to Dave Rawlings you might sound, maybe if we keep our fingers crossed. I think that's all I want to tell you about that. Good luck. <laughs>